the off-season storylines of which there were a few. Um, the biggest one, look, we're about 24 hours away from this bad boy, and this one, Damian Lillard going to the Milwaukee Bucks. It shocked a lot of us. Uh, there's the trade, you're looking at it right there. What you basically need to take away from this is Damian Lillard's on the left, that's one player. And then in return, everyone else got all these other players, Drew Holiday being the big name there in the middle, Trailblazers, of course we know he's gone. But look, Shams, all of us had our phones. I've got my Shams notification set. I'm sitting here waiting on Lillard to go to the Miami Heat. And then all of a sudden, I'm thinking there's a typo. How, how did we get here? Yeah, so L Lillard and the Heat, really, they, they both obviously wanted <laughs> to be together. And they believe Portland had absolutely no interest in doing any deal. It got to the point where Joe Cronin, the GM in Portland, he did not return any of the calls from Damian Lillard, Damian Lillard's agent. Um, they went weeks without communicating. I mean, there was a point where Damian Lillard was in the facility um, in September working out, and there was no communication. Joe Cronin, there was no hi, hello, no, no pleasantries exchanged. And that's, I think, when Damian Lillard knew, I'm going to get traded. It's only a matter of, of where and when. Um, and he obviously ends up get, getting traded in Milwaukee. And we know the pressure that the Bucks have been under. When you think about Giannis, and the Kumpo made those comments uh, a couple months ago now and said, I, I just want to win a championship. If that's not in Milwaukee, I'm fine. I mean, really opening the door for his exit. And John Horst, the GM there, you have to give him credit. In 2020, when, when Giannis' Supermax extension was on the line, they go out and get Drew Holiday. Now when Giannis' extension, he's, he's, from what I'm told, he's not going to extend. But his future's up in the air. They go out and get Damian Lillard. Man. And I think they're still trying to fit in. They're still trying to find their, their, their place. But from what I'm told, Dame and Giannis are hitting it off. And I think Dame is happy now with the result. I mean, look, they, they jumped up to plus 380 to win a championship on the FanDuel Sportsbook. I, I, I don't know if Dame was excited to move to Milwaukee. Yeah. As a fan and a consumer of the product of basketball, it's exciting to me. Um, are they now in the running for the best? I mean, look, when you look at the Eastern Conference, it's, it's Milwaukee and it's Boston, and then there's a drastic drop-off. But when you look on paper, this, this – makes sense it fits right Damian Lillard can shoot the ball at an elite level he can play make he opens up the lanes for Giannis and that's exactly what he need but to sit here and automatically assume this is a huge <laughs> upgrade over Drew Holiday who has won them a championship who Team USA is now making the point that we want this guy going to the Olympics he can lock down the best offensive score on the other team so there are some questions but yeah when you look offensively you look at this team and you can get a healthy Chris Middleton and some of the other signings some of the guys they brought back they're going to be right there at the end of the season to compete for a championship. The Drew Holiday part, I think, was bittersweet for a lot of people. We didn't want to see him go. Um, big fan of everything he's done on the court. All right, Lou, this is it's a very pointed question. Is Dame Lillard that much of an upgrade over Holiday? Offensively, yes. And after that, it's a very polite no. <laughs> <laughs> just to piggyback off of what Chandler just said, look, you've won a championship with Drew Holiday already. Um, he was one of the anchors of that team. So it's hard to say a guy is an upgrade um, after replacing a guy that you've won a championship with and that guy being Damian Lillard, you know, who can change any, the trajectory of any team that he's going to play on, you know. So I don't, I don't know if, it's, if upgrade is the word, um, but he definitely gives them the same opportunity Drew Holiday gave them in winning a championship, if not a better one. Yeah, so, yeah. And to me, the key is Chris Middleton. Last year, he went mm. through so many injuries. You know what you're going to get with Giannis. You know you're, what you're going to get with Damian Lillard. But people forget quickly how good he was and how he was kind of their go-to go score. He, was he closed games. He, he, he was closing out the, 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 the nets as on the as, road. As, in yeah, game seven. As good as Giannis, Giannis is, yeah. give, me a, give me a healthy Chris Middleton. Now we're talking about this team and that trio as the best trio in the NBA. It's, this is the thing, and I, it's amazing to me that Drew Holiday ended up in Boston. Do you think that they would have made this trade if they would have known that he was just going to mm. be in the same conference, not that far off, the other contender. I don't Absolutely think so. Not. No, yeah, right? I don't think so. No. <laughs> but that's the risk that you're willing to take when you move a guy like Drew Holiday to a rebuilding team like Portland. You can't imagine he's going to last there. You can't imagine that. But now it's kind of they made their bed and they got to sleep in it because that's going to be the guy on the team that they're going to have to go through to get to the finals. I kind of love it. It's almost like they weren't done screwing with him. Like, oh, yeah, now watch this. We're going to keep it a, moving. It's a dice roll, and it might backfire. <laughs> Look, the uh -huh. East was not the only place where moves were happening. Obviously, the West as well. The NBA never sleeps. And on that side of thing, you had Bradley Beal to the Suns. 
uh, Chris Paul to the Wizards, who then ended up with the Warriors. And he's going to start, you guys. He mm. wants you to know that. Jordan Poole and a bunch of picks to the Wizards, then later traded. It's just, it's confusing. I don't know about That's, Chris Paul starting, by the way. He's not going to start. Yeah, really? But nobody wants to tell him that because it's awkward. All right. Um, Beal had the very big, famous, beautiful, delicious no trade clause. One of the few in NBA history. It's, to it's have. a wonderful yeah. thing. All power to you. But did it affect? how everything went down for him. No question it affected things. I mean, if Damian Lillard, and let's be honest, if he had a no-trade clause, he would have been in Miami now. So Bradley Beal negotiates a no-trade clause, and I think we finished our show the week that Bradley Beal got <laughs> traded. So this is a good kind of uh, circle, you know, m all moment. Cool. All, all coming full circle now. But I think the leverage that comes with that no-trade clause and the fact that he wanted to go to Phoenix, and I think the, the one thing that I've been told between him, Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, they, they've they talked and, and it's hmm. like, we, we don't, we're not trying to see who's gonna score 35 points. If, if it takes, if we're one of us is at 18, 20, any given night, 15, as long as we win a championship, I, I don't think these guys care. But I think, of course, having the no, tr no trade clause, that led him to Phoenix. And at that point, it was Matt Ishbia, James Jones, Josh Bartlestein uh, going out and meeting with him in New York and selling him. They were the only team out of all the teams to go out and meet, get a meeting with him. So hmm. that clinched it. They're like, we're not wasting time otherwise. Uh, KD has said, this big three that you just mentioned, that once they're rolling, off and rolling, they're going to be impossible to stop. We do <clears> love <throat> a big three. They are tied for phase with the Nuggets right now, um, FanDuel Sportsbook. But we've seen big threes fail, Lou. How does this one look to you? It looks really good. I close my eyes, get about any of those guys, <laughs> and, and ask them to go win us a basketball game. So impossible, uh, you know, this is the NBA. But... If we're probably as close to impossible <laughs> as impossible is going to get with, with Bradley, Book, um, and, and KD at the helm of that team. And when, when you look at how those three guys play, the question is, you know, who's the point guard, right? Do you take Book, you know, away from what he does really well and make him bring it up? Do you have a guy like a Kogi initiate the offense? But those three guys can go one-on-one. -on -one. Those three guys can go get out and transition. They're so talented and they're so explosive offensively. I'm not really worried about who their point guard is. They have capable guys to bring the ball up and get into sets. I agree. It's gonna. They're gonna have to take turns. They're gonna have to be unselfish. Some one. It's gonna be a different guy every single night. But man, on paper and and on film, they fit. And if they're healthy, I think they're the team to beat in the West. What is the weakness, if you have to? I mean, who's gonna defend outside of Josh Kogi? Or who's gonna play point guard? Is their bench gonna? Is their bench gonna provide sparks? I, I like their signings. I like Drew Eubanks off the bench. I like Nurkic starting in the. At the so they have the team. I love Eric Gordon, who can come in and knock down threes. Um, but I think that point guard is a huge question. I mean, Jordan Jordan Goodwin is literally, he's their backup, he's their, he's a, he's and he's their backup. only yeah. point guard True point on the guard, roster. Yeah. So that's, that's and it. you know, as the season goes along, it's all about depth. Yeah. It's all yeah. about depth. You deal with injuries. You deal with different things. That bench is going to have to try to win them a lot of basketball games. So I think that's where the weakness comes in for me. Um, KD's had his share. That actually sounded awful. I'm going to redo that. <laughs> KD has been a part of very important big threes in his life. There have been some really good ones. Um, we're going to take a look right now, Chandler. I'm going to put you on the spot. I want you to choose which of these. You had to rank them. Okay. I mean, that ain't a bad list to be on. Yeah. I mean, geez. I, I think the the best, obviously, is the Warriors, right? I don't. Th I think they continue to win championships until <laughs> last year if he didn't leave. So I go number one, Warriors, and then going to the I'm bottom, you got to go the Nets fourth. They played about seven games together with each other. Oh, that's other. the bottom. Okay. That's the last. What a weird way you're doing your yeah, list. Yeah, I just going from best <laughs> okay. and automatically the worst. All the drama that that team was riddled with. Injuries. I think they were 10 and 3 it, together. It, but yeah, but it's a small sample size. I know. Like, yeah. I, I can't I can't really rank small. them. The Thunder was they, they were I think the Suns had the chance to be the second best big three he has. The Thunder, they were young. They weren't quite in their prime yet. These yeah. guys are all in their prime. It's 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 they're all healthy. I think it goes Golden State, Phoenix, OKC. Than Brooklyn, so Phoenix as as getting the nod. Without... I, think, I think they can be. I think they can be, and I think they can win a championship. And that Oklahoma City team never did. Agree. Yeah, I stay. I stay with that. Yeah, I feel like that was good. I mean, the the Oklahoma City one. What could have been? Oh. I feel like that will always be a what could have been. Um, whenever we look back on that entire time, uh, the more the more stuff happened. You guys, Kristaps Porzingis. Remember him? They once called him the unicorn, but that has now been stolen and given to other people since. Uh, traded to the Celtics. Marcus Smart then goes to the Grizzlies. Tyus Jones, Danilo Gallinari now in the nation's capital. Um, as far as best starting lineups, 
people are saying maybe the Celtics team. Do you agree with that? It's one of them. I don't know who they're going to start. I don't know if Horford's going to start, if they're going to start KP and Horford. I'm probably the biggest Derek White fan in America. I think he's so solid. I think he can score. I think he can defend. He can shoot. He can play make. I do think losing someone like Marcus Smart to their locker room, to their culture, mm -hmm. is, is tough. But... I know preseason is preseason, but Porzingis looked good, and he looked very, very strong. He looked healthy. He could he shoot the He looked stronger, ball. right? Like he looked better. Okay. But it's tough to put my eggs in that basket after everything, you know, the, of what we've seen. But, yeah, just for, for me, this is still the best team in the Eastern Conference. To me, it just feels like it's, it's their time. I think Tatum and Brown are entering their prime. They're ready. They struggled last year in the playoffs a little bit, but they're going to grow from that. They're going to get better from that. They have a good bench. Um... But it's just, it's, it's like every team, it's all who's healthy and who gets hot <laughs> in the playoffs. Um, so you have Holiday, you have Porzingis. So somebody has to, I don't want to say suffer, but their, their role's going to change. Who's that? One of those two. <laughs> yeah. It ain't, ain't going to be Brown. Right? It, 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 no, it's, they're not changing not, at all. It's not going to be JT, uh, and it's not going to be Jay. So... Porzingis, you got to get in where you fit in, bro. <laughs> you got to get in where you fit in. You know, those two guys have always anchored that basketball team, accomplished so many different things, you know, without having expectations, you know, and, and to do that. So to add Drew Holiday, to add Porzingis, those guys got to get in where they fit in. I mean, there were moments last year where those two guys, JT and, and Jay, like, they disappeared in the playoffs. I mean, I, I remember you just being frustrated, like, yeah. what's going on? So now when th those types of things happen, you figure out, is this a trend or was this just a blip? What do you do with that from last year carrying into this season if you're those guys? Well, I think it's a blip for now, but if it continues this season and uh, then it becomes a trend, then it's an issue. But uh, I, issue. I don't think they worry about them. I think you look at two of these guys, possibly the best duo. You know, there's so many of these days, duos, trios, but these two guys are elite. They can do everything on the floor. They both are two-way players. They can defend. And now you add a Drew Holiday who has that experience in the postseason to relieve pressure. Hopefully Przingis is healthy. Derek White, Al Horford, guys like this, uh, they can relieve pressure. But yeah, the best players show up in the postseason and those two didn't do that last year so they definitely have an onus on them to step up this year and kind of carry this team to a championship sometimes a disappointing finish is the best thing that can happen to a team um does that strike you here is that interesting to you here no question and obviously we know about the players J J like jason tatum jalen brown those guys being superstars is going to take this team where they're going to go but to me what i'm looking at is joe mazula last season i think there was a lot of scrutiny there um, you know, his, his coaching staff, it was a tough position, position for him to be in. Literally, he takes over a few days before <laughs> training camp. Ime Yudoka's out. So now he gets a full summer to, to kind of get, get ingratiated there. And then they, they've really toughened up the staff. Charles Lee comes over. He was the lead assist in Milwaukee. They get Sam Cassell. He comes over from Philadelphia. Like, they really beefed up that bench. I think Chandler touched on that. Like, their bench needed to be stronger uh, supporting a rookie head coach. And now they have... Uh, I, I think done that. So the spotlight's going to be on Joe Mazzulla because there, there are guys on that bench there that are very, very proven. I don't, I'm not going to sit here and say which one's the better player, Drew Holiday or Marcus Smart, but we all know the value of Marcus Smart to the fans of Boston in that locker room. For Drew Holiday, is that an upgrade for the Celtics? I say no. I say no. When I think of Marcus Smart, you know, I feel like he was the heartbeat of that team. Um, he was one of those guys that championed the traditions of, you know, being a Boston Celtic, he was the energy guy. He was the locker room guy. You know, so when I, even though JT um, and, and Jalen were the best players on that team, when I think of the Boston Celtics, I always thought of Marcus Smart. Um, and so basketball-wise, I think so. But, you know, locker room-wise, culture-wise, I say it was Marcus Smart. Yeah, and Lou makes a good point. A lot of time it's not about the production. It's, it's, it's all the little things that a Marcus Smart can do. It's that locker room. It's the culture in the weight room and the, in the facility. And he provided all that. And when you do think of the Boston Celtics, obviously the fans, they think of Tatum, they think of Brown, they think of points, they think of right. highlights. Marcus Smart has been the heartbeat of the team. And I think Drew Holiday is an upgrade offensively, being a true point guard, having the history of being a champion. But he's going to be missed there for sure. I'm going to miss him. Yeah. And I'm not even a fan of that team. Um, Off-season trades, what did they result in percentage-wise? Who are we thinking are the favorites? Who are on top? We'll take a look right now. This is the final question for this part, guys. It's the, this is how FanDuel Sportsbook has decided these guys are going to finish out. Boston Celtics sitting up top. I don't, I, do we agree? Is there anything on there that we're changing? Poor Memphis, why? 
Uh, I mean, I'm surprised Memphis is even on there, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, I mean, they're at... And Cleveland, they're kind of a long shoot. I mean, it's hard to sleep on the champs, right? Everyone always forgets the, the, these yeah. guys. They didn't make too many moves, but that, that's the same consistent product that they had last year that, that got it done. So I, I, I don't ever overlook them, but yeah, the Celtics are my team.